by Lynn Thompson. An Inland Voyage by Robert Louis Stevenson. Section 18. Down the Wards to Compiègne. The most patient people grow weary at last with being continually wetted with rain, except, of course, in the Scottish Highlands, where there are not enough fine intervals to point the difference. That was like to be our case the day we left Noyon. I remember nothing of the voyage. It was nothing but clay banks and willows and rain, incessant, pitiless, beating rain until we stopped to lunch at a little inn at Pampre, where the canal ran very near the river. We were so sadly drenched that the landlady lit a few sticks in the chimney for our comfort. There we sat in a steam of vapour, lamenting our concerns. The husband donned a game-bag and strode out to shoot. The wife sat in a far corner watching us. I think we were worth looking at. We grumbled over the misfortune of La Faire. We forecast other La Faires in the future, although things went better with the cigarette for spokesman. He had more aplomb altogether than I, and a dull, positive way of approaching a landlady that carried off the India rubber bags. Talking of La Faire put us talking of the reservists. Reservery, said he, Seems a pretty mean way to spend one's autumn holiday. About as mean, returned I dejectedly, as canoeing. These gentlemen travel for their pleasure? asked the landlady with unconscious irony. It was too much. The scales fell from our eyes. Another wet day, it was determined, and we put the boats into the train. The weather took the hint. That was our last wetting. The afternoon fared up. Grand clouds still voyaged in the sky, but now singly and with a depth of blue around their path, and a sunset in the daintiest rose and gold inaugurated a thick night of stars and a month of unbroken weather. At the same time, the river began to give us a better outlook into the country. The banks were not so high. The willows disappeared from along the margin, and Pleasant Hill stood all along its course and marked their profile on the sky. In a little while the canal, coming to its last lock, began to discharge its water-houses on the Oise, so that we had no lack of company to fear. Here were all our old friends, the Deo Gratias of Condé and the four sons of Amor, journeyed cheerily downstream along with us we exchanged waterside pleasantries with the steersman perched among the lumber or the driver horse with bawling to his horses and the children came and looked over the side as we paddled by we had never known all this while how much we missed them but it gave us a fillip to see the smoke from their chimneys a little below this junction we made another meeting of yet more account for there we were joined by the Aisne, already a far-travelled river and fresh out of Champagne. Here ended the adolescence of the Was. This was his marriage day. Thenceforward he had a stately brimming march, conscious of his own dignity and sundry dams. He became a tranquil feature in the scene. The trees and towns saw themselves in him as in a mirror. He carried the canoes lightly on his broad breast. There was no need to work hard against an eddy, but idleness became the order of the day, and mere straightforward dipping of the paddle, now on this side, now on that, without intelligence or effort. Truly we were coming into halcyon weather upon all accounts, and were floated towards the sea like gentlemen. We made Compiègne as the sun was going down, a fine profile of a town above the river over the bridge a regiment was parading to the drum people loitered on the quay some fishing some looking idly at the stream as the two boats shot in along the water we could see them pointing them out and speaking one to another we landed at a floating lavatory where the washerwomen 
were still beating the clothes. End of section 18